Hello everyone and welcome back. Don't mind me, I've been out in the guest house taping, so these are my taping pants, but I decided to come out to the fish house tonight and we've got several things for the fish house and Melissa and I have been out here several times and then end up doing something else besides putting stuff together. We've done some of the stuff, but then we'll watch a movie or whatever and uh, I said I would do another video on the fish house it really surprised me that so many people like there was a lot of them from Texas like right in the United States like for, for me up here we see wheelhouse fish houses like this you know in the summertime you see campers and in the wintertime you see fish houses you know, just going up the road to you know because a lot of people go up north to the bigger lakes and you're starting to see more and more of these getting pulled around in the summer too because people use them you know for an rv so it really surprised me how many people were like i didn't even know that they existed and for me up here we just see them all the time you know just driving into town you'll see them parked in people's yard you know waiting to be used again so that was really interesting to me uh when i posted that video how many people had never even knew that one of these kind of fish houses existed so I just thought I'd come out, one thing that Melissa and I like, like we spent a night out here, we slept out here, and we slept in this bed, we just dropped it down. And it was fine and everything, but we're finding that we like when, instead of this set up as a booth, as a table, having this down as a bed, because even if you were fishing in these holes, when you're sitting, you know, like this is where, it ends so you're sitting like this and then the table comes over you don't have a whole lot of room so for fishing so if we just make this up as a bed and then just like throw a a throw type blanket over it so you're not sitting on the bedding um we can sit right here she wants to get more pillows so you can you know just kick back and then you can even lay down scroll your phone read a book watch a movie and still be fishing and you're not sitting at the booth. She hates sitting at those booths. And like I was talking about before with the work camper, that's where I spent all my time. But there is the little couch in there that folds, you know, comes out into a bed, it was very small and uncomfortable. And you couldn't see the TV really sitting there unless your neck is turned way that way. So I think we'll end up leaving this down for now. And then if we want to, we can drop this down because we're gonna have a heated blanket on that one and everything so once we get out there for fishing um, we might end up up there but for right now we want to make sure that this one is really good also this one isn't quite as big this that's a queen which what does that end up being like 60 inches maybe a little under 60 I think and this is only 48 but we'll figure it out <laughs> for right now that's what we're doing she got some more pillowcases that are kind of a fishing theme so I wanted to put that. We're gonna get some more pillows and um, some more pillowcases. I think we're still shy two cases for what we have right now. But I'm getting so much stuff stacked up on the counter that I wanted to do some of this so I can free up a little room. We're looking forward to uh, taking this thing out for the first time on a summer run to a campground and seeing how it is. In the last fish house video I talked about this thing here, how it's stupid to have it here because you put up your wet slimy fish and it's going to run down here. We don't want to use this, but I unscrewed it and took it off. And then the wood behind here is real light compared to the rest of it because it hasn't had any uh, exposure to anything. So we decided we'll leave it up there. We're just not going to use it. Now that I was looking up here, she must have got a quilt, or whatever you want to call it, a bed cover that matches those uh, pillowcases. So I'll probably put this on this lower bed.
and then on this bed, I'll put this comforter that came with it. She didn't expect it to be like this at all. She was going to send it back, and then nobody will really see this, but if it's needed, we can use it, because we don't mind the gray. Oh, there is a couple of pillowcases. I can put those other two pillows in here. We don't mind this so much. What she didn't realize, and I said, come on, it's just cheesy enough so it's awesome, and she didn't think so. It came with a furry pillow, and then a cheapy hotel pillow there. So yeah, she says, no, whatever you do, do not put this, the little pillows out here. So I'm still going to put them up there. <laughs> I don't care. She can throw them away. So we have a heated mattress pad to go on there. I might as well get that on there right now. turn the camera off for a minute because I'm not climbing up there with my pants on <laughs> to get that over there so I'm going to take these off I have long johns underneath them crawl up there tuck that in probably throw this on there and then I'll come back here not sure where she got this but I'm going to give them credit this is the first one I've ever seen that says top or bottom. I'm constantly, when I make the bed, doing it the wrong way and then you have to flip it around and that's why I hate making the bed like this. It would be easy. And I am still going to be tearing this off to put the cedar on there and underneath. And then shorten this up just a little bit. What I'm going to do is take this part here where the railing goes in, which is right here. I don't actually have to shorten the bed up. I need to get this shortened up because when this goes in there, everything is right here. I don't know. I'll have to look at it. I might have to shorten it up a little bit. But anyway, I want the thing to go down on the inside here to... Uh, Instead of being out here, I don't want to see these. I want it to be inside so it just buries into it. And then what I'm going to do is a lot of these fish houses have cabinets that go across the top. It's like their cabinets will come out here, or they probably would go right here, and then they have a set of cabinets that go all the way across, and then this ties in. This, you know, there's a, tons of different layouts for these things. And we still have yet to find one that we like better than this layout. Even the ones that have slides in them still seem a little bit cramped. It's just weird. We look at so many of them. And anyway, we don't want to have that. One of the problems when they have that going across, they said, is that um, if you don't drop that bed down or whatever, it'll get real cold up there, which, you know, you would drop it down before you, ah, we're going to sleep in it anyway. But when I build this railing thing here, I'm just going to, go up like as high as I can and say it it's like this much the railing thing that goes in here I want to build it I'll do it on a cedar and then it'll just be you know three quarters of an inch thick but I'm gonna make it match the cabinet doors so this same design right here but I don't have to have any knobs on it and there won't have to be any hinges but if I can make that work, and it doesn't look stupid, because it would have to be away from the wall, about four inches on each side. Maybe I can get down to two inches, because we've got some boards right there. But anyway, then it can go up, and then when you raise the bed up, it'll go all the way up, and then that'll hit against almost the ceiling, and then it'll completely hide the bed. It'll look like there's cabinets going across here, and you won't see the bedding up here. 
So that's one of my ideas. And then, like when we slept in here, I did put the one railing thing that they have, which has an angle over here, so you can get out. And Melissa said what would be smarter to do when I build this, if I do it, is to uh, go ahead and make it in two pieces. So it can be up and looking nice, but then we can pull one of them off. So I would have to have, you know, like four places where it drops down in. So then at night a person could get out and get down and go, you know, use the bathroom or get a drink of water or whatever. But we'll see. Until I get this cedar on here and the bedding's there and it's all raised up and I can see what that looks like because all I've been looking at is a raw mattress. Um, you know, and this ugly, ugly. Then I'll decide what we're going to do. But right now that's one plan that's kind of moving around in my head. Another question I had is how does it work in the wintertime? Like one of the things, a lot of them that I got was how much ice do you need to bring this unit out there? Because it says that it weighs under 7,000 pounds, but uh, you're going to figure 9,000 pounds and then you're going to figure the truck is another 7, 8,000. Anyway, safely you could go on the ice at 16 inches of ice. I would never go on the ice without 20 inches. Uh, even just going out in my, my three-quarter ton gas truck that I used to have, did a lot of ice fishing then, and just bringing out my portable fish house that you go up, I would never go out unless there was 14 inches of ice. So I want to make sure that I have plenty of ice, so we'll do 20 inches of ice for this thing. And like when we were up there on Lake of the Woods, there was 26 inches of ice, you know, and we were 22 miles out. So. We don't always have to be out that far either. If you just go out one mile or five or six miles, it would be much easier if you ever have to go back to shore for anything than, you know, 22 miles on the ice when you're running a 15 mile an hour speed limit. You know, that takes a long time to get off the ice and get on the ice. So anyway, um, that's how much ice I'll want before I go out there, especially since I'm going to be pulling it with a diesel. Uh, what was another question that... There were several questions that came up. Another one that came up now I remember is, how does it work going out there? Do you bring it out every time and bring it home every time? What do you do about that? And there are several options. You, I mean, I definitely want to go out on a resort with something this big where they got plowed roads. So you can get a day pass, which might cost you, I don't know, 10, 20 bucks, whatever. You can get a monthly pass. You can get a season pass. So you always can go up there and, you know, the road's plowed, let them know you're coming up there. They know where the fish are. They'll plow out a spot where I can back the, this trailer, this camper in there to fish. And then, you know, stay your days and then leave. Another thing that they have that you can do, uh, at least uh, there's a couple of the resorts. If I were to bring this up there in the late fall, uh, bring, it, bring up the fish house, drop it off at that resort, as soon as there's enough ice on the lake to pull it out there, they will actually go and set your fish house for you and let you know that, hey, your fish house is out there, you can use it. And then there are places that you can then go up there and use the fish house, whatever, and I don't know what that is and what that amount is to have that done. But another thing that they will do is say I, I left it up there and I'm home for a couple weeks and, and we, um, Melissa and I are going to run back up there and go fishing. Um, you can call ahead of time, they'll drive out there, make sure everything is plowed to your house, I mean this is saying you left it on the ice, and then they will go inside, start your furnace for you, check all your holes, open up all your holes, you know, with the auger, um, you know, if needed, and then so when you show up, you walk into your fish house, 72 degrees in here, everything's ready to go, bring your stuff in, drop your lines down, and you're fishing. So basically, you can do whatever you want. You can have a plow on your truck and just go out places and plow your own path and go out there. You know, nobody owns the water in Minnesota. Maybe it's all over the place. Uh, all the water is public, is public land. But getting to the water, and there's usually a public access, you can do that. But you're much better to go out to a resort where they plow that wide road like you saw up at Lake of the Woods. And lots of people have driven on it because... Ice is fine, but when you drive on the ice, it gets thicker and thicker. It drives that cold down. And, you know, you feel safe. Nothing worse. I mean, who wants to carry this weight and a diesel truck 
on virgin ground plowing a road where you don't know that anybody else has been there. So I def will definitely do the safe route. But those are some of the options that you have for bringing this out. Uh, now I'm, I'm sure there are places where I can bring it up there and they'll bring it out in the winter time and you can probably even store it in the winter time on some property that they have. We have not checked into this, but it would be stupid if somebody didn't have a business like that. And then in the summertime, you go up there and you use it as a camper, you know, and then they still have you right there by their resort, you know, to spend money. I mean, that's the, that's the name of the game, you know, so, so yeah, we got all kind of options. We, we don't want to do that in the summer, really. We want to run this around to different places and, and use it as a camper and then, bring the boat out and go fishing on some places, you know, when we're not going up to the tent. And uh, we're, we're both looking forward to that. We really are. Let me see, I don't know what, this looks like just a big old blanket, like she bought this one. Ooh, that's actually pretty, feels pretty nice. Really nice. That's a heavy blanket too. sure what to do with the sleeping bag. I think I'll pull that off because we just threw that on there so that when we were sitting there, you know, we weren't sitting just right on the cushions. I think she's going to get, she was looking to get like a, a, a piece of foam, like a pillow top, but only being four feet wide, I think like a twin or something is like 38 and this is 48. And, the next one is like 56 or I don't know. And I said we could get one and just cut the foam into that, you know, as big as it goes into there and then just lay it here when we don't want it, roll it up, tie it, shove it in one of the closets here and make this into the, to the booth again if we wanted it. Because we probably would want it a booth if we had, you know, a bunch of people up here. I don't know. I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. That actually makes it look like a pretty big bed like that. I like it. Doesn't mean she's going to like it, but I like it. Let's see, where's the other pillow? she wants to do with this. She bought, she actually ordered four or five maybe of these. 
and she thought they were bath towels with the fish thing on it, and they were expensive. And then one came in, and the other ones hadn't shipped yet, and she immediately called and canceled it because all these are as thin little, like a, you know, like a kitchen type or, I don't know, a hand towel for the bathroom, which is probably where it'll go. We've already got one in here. I have no idea. I'll just put it up here. No, I better put it somewhere where she can find it. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll never remember. I see that she bought hydrogen peroxide. What else? I put a first aid kit in here. She's got Blistex, another Blistex, because your lips get really dry in the wintertime. These are just reading glasses. Now I've got these prescription ones, but I always wore reading ones. And then they were hard to get when COVID hit. So I ordered these and they're just cheapy ones, but if these were to break or something, I would have a, have a pair I could wear. But First aid, baby wipes, band-aids, bar soap, no idea where these lights came from. I mean they came with the fish house, I have no idea what they're for, so they're going to go up here in the utility part. Vitamin D3, um, must be like, not aspirin, but the Tylenol, ibuprofen, that's about it. This can go right here. And you can see she picked out some new, a new rug for in here, and a new top. Because you remember before they had the black and red plaid in there. She bought two headlamps that are just for this camper. This is the new shower curtain. Must be another kind of a fish towel. I guess I'll put that with the other one. I did when I was looking over there. There's two of these, so she must have ordered four other ones, I don't know, but I'll keep all these together so she can figure that out. Got a bunch of board games. This is chess and checkers. Scrabble. I don't think I've ever played that game. I've watched my kids play it. Sorry, when I was a kid, my brothers, I was the oldest, and then my brother Chris, and then my sister Tammy, and then my brother John. We would play Sorry a lot. What's this one? Trouble. Don't know if I ever played that or not. I'm sure I have. What's this one? Yahtzee. And then we want to get a cribbage board because for some reason everybody up here has a cribbage board. I've never played cribbage, but I think, you know what, this would be a good place for board games. DVDs. <laughs> oh, what do we got here? Alcohol, more band-aids. More hydrogen peroxide, holy crap. Two decks of cards. Uno. The 
bolts. These are directions to the heated blanket. I don't need those. I guess I can put these DVDs away again. She bought a couple new ones, so I mean I've got a whole bunch in there. Good, the bad, the ugly, hang them high. Suicide Squad, and no idea. Never been opened before. We watched this one the other night, Secondhand Lions. I bet you that one is still in here. I've seen that movie before and so has she, but that's really a good movie. Classic TV collection. Oh, a bonanza. Melissa doesn't much care for that. Absolute Zero. Magnificent Seven. Zombieland. We watched that one a couple nights before we watched uh, Secondhand Lions. And that's a really, that's a, that's a kind of a cute little movie. Everest. Gods of Egypt, it came from outer space. Oh, there's two that aren't. Magnificent Seven, a river runs through it. Oh, come on now. Troy, Into the Storm. Legends of the Old West. Star Trek Into Darkness. Clash of the Titans, Pixels, I have no idea what that is, True Grit, Terminator, come on now, I think I mentioned this in the last farmhouse video, I'm not sure, but I don't know, it's been a couple of weeks ago. Melissa and I were, we were just out here screwing around, you know, watching a movie, doing something. And uh, anyway, it smelled hot in here. Like, like the furnace always goes all the time, but it smelled hot, if, if there's a smell for hot. And it didn't smell like something was burning, it just smelled hot. And when I come up here and put my hand over the, this register here, it seemed like it was blowing out real hot. So anyway, I mean, luckily we have our CO2 detector in here, or the carbon monoxide. And I have to hook up, there's a propane carbon monoxide detector underneath, which now the bed, but where the booth goes, and that is unhooked. So they have unhooked that because that runs all the time. I had the same trouble in my work camper. So if you leave it for a few days and the battery's on to keep your fridge going, that thing also drains on your battery. So anyway, it was hot in here, so finally it was like, you know, let's go in, we shut it down. And then when I went outside and looked though, to make sure everything was okay, out of the furnace, it was blowing black smoke, which it wasn't doing before. None of the travel trailers have ever blown out black smoke. And now there's soot on the outside where that, where the burner, you know, there's like an inlet and an outlet. So, um, and anyway, if you go back in this video to the beginning where I was panning on the side here, you'd be able to see that soot. So then I went to the, and I talked about this in the other video, to the Ice Castle Owners Group Facebook page and, and posted the question, posted the picture of the soot, and everybody right away, you got to clean your burner. You got to clean your burner. And make sure that you order more gaskets for your burner. So this must be something common. They said that, like, the wind can blow... If it blows against there real hard, some people try to put something kind of in front of it, but out a ways to block that wind so it's not pushing it in. So and to me, I thought that was going to be a big deal. Like somebody said, you got to get a brand new furnace. And somebody said, uh, you should 
you're gonna have to pull the whole furnace out and clean it. And I'm going, man, you know. And then finally somebody said, clean the burner, 10 minute job, super easy. It's like, okay, I know I can do this. So then what I did, here's the furnace. I took these two screws out, which pulls the front of it off. And then there's a little door here that goes up, over, and down. And then there's one wire that hooks into it. And that actually has like the, it's not the pilot, but it's the zapper thingy. And then it's got the little thing that tells it it's warm enough, you know. To, so anyway, when I pulled that out, it was completely caked in uh, soot, you know, black crap. And then on the bottom, once I pulled that out, which is the burner, pulled that whole burner out, and there was probably this much of that black, real fine stuff, but it was in chunks. So I don't know if when I was driving home, there was a couple of big bumps that it hit. You know, it just shook everything loose and it was on the bottom. But anyway, I took it out, real simple, brought it into the garage and took the air compressor and blew that out. Then I brought the vacuum out here and I vacuumed that whole thingy out and put it all back together and runs like a charm now. No more heat, you know, no more smelling hot, no more black smoke going out. But I did learn something and then there's a the whole thing of like things you should have on hand for if you're fishing because if it's 30 below zero and something happens and you're out on the ice and it's the middle of the night, where are you going to go to get parts? So I'm going to order another gasket. Funny thing on that gasket is, you know, it goes up and then kind of triangle back, triangle down, over, and then there's a rip in it. And I thought that it was broke. But when I looked it up on mine to look at the gaskets, and it's like felt, um, they come ripped. And I could not find out why they come ripped, but they all, that was a question that was asked in the questions and answer thing. You know, is it ripped like in the picture? And they said, yes, they all come ripped. So I have no clue why they do that. But anyway, I'll order some of them. I think I'm going to order the actual firing thing that goes in there. There's like three things that, you know, you buy this and then get this one that's on Amazon. And I think I'll get it all. Even the, the control board for this is only like 80 bucks, the whole computer part. And it might not be bad to just have one of them on hand because you just never know. But anyway, simple fix and it works great now. <laughs> That's kind of cute. Definitely looks like something you'd have in a fish house shower curtain or the outside curtain I think I'm gonna hook put this on there and then I'm gonna call it a night and then let's do this uh, I'll do another video because now I've got it like cleaned up that far and I'll do this there's still a toaster to undo and a bunch of other stuff that Melissa got here uh, why don't you put down questions that you have because there were other questions I can't remember what they were I'd have to go back so let's do this video and then you guys put questions in the comments if you have any. I, I, like I said, it just amazed me that, you know, I, I didn't even know that these existed. And, and that, it, not a lot of things kind of get me. But like Melissa said, why would anybody see what one of these is like down in Louisiana, Texas, any of the southern states? You wouldn't know. And I just had never thought about that, you know. I just remembered how much I dislike doing shower curtains too. It's like if I was like six inches taller. I like these better than the kind that spin on though because you're there all day. Those are better than these kind. But Okay, everyone. Well, thanks a lot for watching. The main reason I came out here was to vacuum the floor so I can bring the vacuum in the house because I want a vacuum in the living room and the bedroom. And I never got to that yet.
Well, like I said, thanks a lot for watching. Leave your questions in the comments. We still have a whole half a fish house to go of putting things away and getting things set up. Melissa did buy me a pair of these. The other ones that I have in the house have holes in them. Uh, so your feet get wet if you go outside at all for a short time. So these are just for the fish house. And if I have to leave and go out to the truck and there's snow out there, it's not going to pack into those holes. I will see you guys on the next video.